Baseball is brought to you by Rheingold Extra Dry. The beer Gary Gentry, we'll be back with the start of today's game in just one minute. I am a going on a long journey. I will be following the spring through field and valley. I'll be searching for the natural thing. Rheingold Extra Dry is made with good water, just about the best in the world. If you don't start out with good water, you don't end up with good beer. We start out with good water. Natural Rheingold. It is my time that I was searching for the natural thing. Rheingold Breweries Incorporated, New York, New York, and Orange, New Jersey, ask you to help keep America beautiful. Bill Hans delivers, and there is a swing and a miss. Bill Hans with a record of five wins and one loss starting on the mound today for the Chicago Cubs. They count to A.G., the leadoff man, the first man up in the game. He has one ball and one strike. The game has begun. It's two strikes, I beg your pardon. Here's a pitch low and away for a ball, so now it's one and two. One ball and two strikes to A.G. with Bud Harrelson on deck. Bill Hans from Parsippany, New Jersey. He is the ace of the Chicago Cub mound staff. The Cubs are leading the Eastern Division of the National League. Here's a swing and a miss strike three, and Hans has struck out 80 to open up the ball game. Now here quickly is the lineup in batting order for the New York Mets. Center fielder Tommy Agee, shortstop Bud Harrison, left fielder Dave Marshall, right fielder Art Chansky, second baseman Ken Boswell, first baseman Mike Jorgensen, third baseman Joe Foy, catcher Jerry Grody, and pitcher Gary Gentry. Bud Harrison up now. He has a batting average of 300, one homer and 10 runs batted in. Hands is a right-hand batter, and here's the pitch. It's in for a call strike. The Chicago Cubs have Ernie Banks at first base, Glenn Beckert at second, Don Kessinger at short, Ron Santo at third, Billy Williams in left field, Jimmy Hall in center field, John Callison in right, Jackie Hyatt is catching. Here's the pitch low for a ball. It's one and one. On the coaching lines, Eddie Yost at third for the Mets, and Yogi Berra is on the lines at first. 30 minutes ago, the official temperature at the lakefront in Chicago, 46 degrees. It is cloudy and it's overcast. A crisp afternoon. Here is the pitch, and it's in for a foul strike. It's one and two. Jackie Hyatt was obtained yesterday by the Chicago Cubs from the Montreal Expos in exchange for outfielder Boots Day. Hyatt appeared as a pinch hitter yesterday, and he is catching today's ball game. The one-two pitch. And it's low for a ball, 2-2. Two -two. The New York Mets flew in here last night. O'Hare Airport was closed when the Mets plane arrived in the area. So they were diverted to Midway on the south side instead. There were thunderstorms, much rain most of last night. Here's a 2-2 two -two pitch. Swung on and missed. Bill Hands has struck out Bud Harrelson. So Hans has opened up now by striking out Adrian Harrelson and Dave Marshall's coming up. Dave had three doubles in a walk in yesterday's ball game. Marshall's hitting 324 and the first pitch is taken in there for a tall strike. 
He's had one homer and ten runs batted in. There's a 14 mile an hour wind blowing cross field here at Wrigley Field at the moment. Here is a pitch that's in for a call strike two. Two men out, nobody on base, and Ari Shamsky is on deck. The official temperature in the city of Chicago at game time was 49 degrees. The lakefront temperature, 46 degrees. We have a lot of youngsters in the ballpark today, as you're doubtless aware. And with a pitch, it breaks high, and it goes to one and two. Bill Hans is 30 years of age. Last year, he won 20 games and lost 14 for the Cubs. His lifetime record against the Mets is eight wins and six losses. This is a one-two pitch to Dave Marshall. Break low, and it hits in the dirt. It's blocked by catcher Jackie Hyatt. Two men out, nobody on base. The Chicago Cubs with a record of 16 wins and 12 losses on top in the Eastern Division. The New York Mets with a record of 15 wins and 16 losses, two and one half games back of the division leading Chicago Cubs. This is a two game series. They'll play here again tomorrow afternoon. Here's a 2 2 delivery, and it is taken low, so it's out full at three and two now. Davidson, the umpire behind the plate, crew chief Augie Donatelli at first, Chris Pelicutis at second, and John Kibler around at third. Payoff, it's one out at miss, and Bill Hans has struck out the side. He has struck out A.G. Harrelson and Dave Marshall in the first inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. In the middle of the first, the score is the Mets nothing and the Cubs coming to bat. If you're considering a new car, but looking for some way to keep the cost down, how about the high cost of automobile financing? Here's a way to save money on that, too, with a new car bank loan direct from Ballston Spa National Bank. You'll save plenty because the interest rate is lower. More important, arrange for your direct new car loan in advance, even before you decide on the car you want. And then you'll be shopping for your new car with cash to pay for it. Your savings over conventional financing will show up every month because your payments to Ballston Spa National Bank will be lower. Find out just how much you can save by calling in advance. Get the exact figures on the amount you'll need for your new car. The number is 885-6711, Boston Spa National Bank, 885-6711, for details on the money-saving direct new car loan. Offices in Burnt Hills, right on Route 50, and in Boston Spa. Saratoga County's oldest bank, Boston Spa National Bank, the bank that saves you money. The pitcher for the New York Mets is Gary Gentry, who has won three games and lost one this year. The catcher is Jerry Grody. Mike Jorgensen is at first, Ken Boswell at second, Bud Harrelson at short, and Joe Foy at third. Dave Marshall is on the left, Tommy A.G. in the center, Art Chansky around and right. John Kessinger is up to lead off. He's batting 3.09. He has one home run and eight runs batted in. Last year, he was the National League's all-star shortstop. Gentry stays swung out in here for strike one. Gary Gentry is 23 years of age. Last year in his rookie season, he won 13 and lost 12 for the Mets. His lifetime record against the Chicago Cubs is one win and two losses. He's a right-hander, pitching here to a switch hitter, batting left. Clear ball, line to second. Oswell has it for the out. This broadcast comes to you through the courtesy of Ryan Gold Brewery, Incorporated, and is authorized on the radio rights granted for the New York Mets solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, or other use of the description and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the New York Mets is prohibited. Glenn Beckert is up. Right-hand batter with a five-game hitting streak. Gentry pitches low and away for a ball. Billy Williams swinging a bat on deck. Again, Gentry works, and the pitch is low for a ball. He goes behind 2-0. Joey Amalfitana is the Cubs coach at first base. And Peanut Lowry is the Cubs coach at third. 
two o delivery. Front and on the ground to second. Boswell is there. He comes up with it. Plays to Jorgensen and two men are out. Now Billy Williams. He is hitting 261. He has 12 homers and 34 runs batted down. By the way, Becker's hitting 301 for the season. Billy Williams is appearing in his 1,011 consecutive game today. He is in the thick of the National League home run in RBI race, along with Hank Aaron of Atlanta and Tony Perez of Cincinnati. Williams had a homer yesterday, boosting his season total to 12. That's high for a ball. So he's tied with Tony Perez for second place. Aaron leads the league with 14 homers. Williams, 34 runs batted in, puts him in second place, one behind Aaron. Swing on a ground ball, and it's taken on one big hop by Jorgensen. He goes to Jesse covering for the out, and what a play by Mike Jorgensen. That ball was tagged base hit all the way. It took one hop, and moving to his glove side, Jorgensen came up with it and made the play on to Gentry. So it's no runs, no hits, no errors, and none left. At the end of an inning, the score is the Cubs nothing and the Mets nothing. The New York Mets ninth annual Old Timers game on Saturday night, July 11th at Shea Stadium will be dedicated to Casey Stengel and his approaching 80th birthday. The festivities will take place before the regularly scheduled game between the Mets and the Montreal Expo. An impressive list of baseball greats identified with Casey's playing and managerial careers has been invited to participate in the ceremony. They include Rube Marquard, Frankie Frisch, Dave Bancroft, George Kelly, Al Lopez, Tony Cuccinella, Van Mungo, Joe DiMaggio, Mickey Mantle, Roger Maris, Whitey Ford, Yogi Berra, Gil Hodges, Richie Ashman, Al Jackson, Jay Hook, and Frank Thomas, Roy Campanella, Carl Erskine, Eddie Stanky, Bobby Thompson, Carl Ferrillo, Don Drysdale, Sandy Koufax, Jeff Haynes, Earl Combs, Lou Boudreau, Ford Frick. Make your ticket plans now. The date again is Saturday night, July 11th, preceding the regularly scheduled game between the Mets and the Expos. We go to the top of the second now, and the New York Mets, who were struck out in the first inning, will send up Art Chamsky. Chamsky's hitting 322. He has three homers and 14 runs batted in. This is Lindsey Nelson with Ralph Kiner and Bob Murphy here at Wrigley Field in Chicago. Tomorrow afternoon, it'll be Jerry Kuzman pitching for the Mets against the Cubs, Ferguson Jenkins. This is the first meeting of the season between these two teams. And pitches in for a call strike to Art Chamsky. The Mets and the Cubs finished 1-2 in the Eastern Division last year. The Mets were eight games out in front at the finish. The Cubs led most of the season. Swing the ground ball to second. Taken by Beckert. Played the bank. One away in the second inning. Now Ken Boswell is up for the Mets. Hitting 288, he has two homers and 11 runs batted in. Bill Hans is making his eighth start of the season. He's tied for second place in the National League in winning percentage. Tom Seaver's on top with a record of 6-1. and one. Hans is 5-1. and one. Hans is tied with Gary Nolan and Wayne Simpson, both of Cincinnati. They have 5-1 and one records. Bill Hands with his pitch now to Boswell, and it's low for a ball. Hands leads the Cubs starting pitchers with an earned run average of 2.29. He has given up fewer home runs than any other Cubs starter. He has allowed only two this season. Last season, Hands had three complete games against the Mets and six starts. It's a swing to drive into right, and it is in there for a base hit. One hop by John Callison and played back. So that is the first hit for the New York Mets. A single to right by Ken Boswell, coming with one man out in the second inning. Mike Jorgensen is up. Jorgensen has a season's average of 175, two homers and two runs batted in. Ernie Banks comes over to hold against the runner. Boswell at first. Banks yesterday hit the 500th home run of his career. Jorgensen bounces it off to the left side and out of play. 
Ralph, uh, how would you best describe this weather? That's an old Chicago one. It's a very normal day, Lindsay. <laughs> it might be here. I have spent the warmest days of my life and the coldest days of my life at this ballpark, both in June. Boswell leads it first, and here's the pitch. It's high for a ball, one and one. The Atlanta Braves are still around town. Played here yesterday, and now they are on their way up to Milwaukee for an exhibition before moving on to Cincinnati for a weekend set. Here's a 1-1 pitch with a runner going. It is low and away, high a throw, and base at second is Boswell with a stolen base. So Kenny Boswell has another to the Mets total. That's Boswell's third stolen base of this season. Jackie Hyatt to catch a rifle it down there to Kessinger, but just not in time. So the New York Mets have their 36th stolen base. Caught stealing only 12 times. No score in the game. The count is two balls and a strike. It was low and away to Jorgensen. So it was a run and hit play, and it pulled off as a stolen base. Bill Hand takes the sign from Hyatt. 2-1 pitch, and it's tied away for a ball. 3-1. Randy Hundley, of course, has been the Iron Man catcher of the Chicago Cubs in recent seasons. Earlier this year, he sustained torn ligaments in his knee in a play at the plate. And yesterday, the cast was removed. J.C. Martin has been bearing the brunt of the catching duty with the Chicago Cubs. Martin traded over from the New York Mets. 3-1 pitch. Swung on, and it's fouled off to the left side out of play. So it's now out full at three and two with Joe Foy waiting on deck. There are not many people who play the game of baseball that are closer students of the game day by day than Ernie Banks, the veteran first baseman. He doesn't miss much of what goes on as far as other ball clubs are concerned and their personnel. Here's a payoff pitch. Swung on and fouled off. Earlier this year, there was an error in the New York Times game story saying that Jesse Hudson had been the Met pitcher. Well, Jesse Hudson is a Met pitcher, a minor league pitcher, who was uh, sent to the minor league complex and reassigned in spring training. Jesse Hudson has not been with the Mets this year, but Ernie Banks did not miss the Times story, and the first question he had of me today in the clubhouse was, how is Jesse Hudson throwing? He uh, knows all about the personnel of everybody's club. Here's a swing and a drive foul on the right field line out of play. Jorgensen got around on that one. The count holds full at 3-2. The Cubs had announced yesterday that if anybody caught the ball hit by Banks for his 500th home run, they'd be awarded $250 a season pass and an autographed baseball. It hit up in the bleachers and rebounded onto the field where Rico Cardi tossed it over into the bullpen, and it was returned to Banks. Swing and a miss. Strikeout number four for Bill Hand. Boswell holds it second, and Joe Foy is coming up with two men out. Joe Foy hitting 204 with one homer and 10 runs batted in. Last year against the Mets, Bill Hand won three, and he lost two. One of his wins was a three-hit 62 decision at Shea Stadium. Playing a foul ball off and out of play. And threw up in the Rutherford area of New Jersey. Leo DeRocher managed to have his two aces ready for the New York Mets in this two-game set. And today, Jenkins tomorrow. Last year, Hands won 20 and Jenkins won 21. New York Mets are going with Gentry today, and it'll be Kuzman tomorrow. Breaking pitch is low, and it's one and one to Joe Foy. There is no score in the game. We're in the top of the second inning. Last year, and the first series between these two teams here, it was a four-game set, and it was split 2-2. Cubs took the first two singles, and the Mets swept the doubleheader to get out even in the first set last year. Sidearm in there for a call strike. It's one and two. 
Jerry Grody, the catcher, is on deck. And check the runner at second. One, two, pitch. And he is hit by the pitch ball. Boy is hit by the pitch ball. Rolls over. Now he's looking at his wrist. Yogi Berra comes down. Here comes uh, Jill Hodges out to see about him. Dave Davidson, the umpire, actually called that a foul ball at first, and then he's checking with Boy to see where it did hit him, and I think he has reversed his decision. Tom McKenna, the Mets trainer, is examining Joe Foy right now. He appeared to be holding his wrist as he turned over. So Hodges is there, Yost is there, Bear is there, as Tom McKenna works on Joe Foy. Umpire Dave Davidson also looking on. Jerry Grody is standing just outside the batter's box. He'll be up next. Ken Boswell holding out there at second base. Now Foy is going down to first, so he's staying in the ballgame as the base runner hit by a pitch ball. Jerry Grody, who has played only one game since he was hospitalized on the recent Med Road trip to the West Coast, has a batting average of 136. He has three runs batted in. Grody has not seen nearly as much action this season for the Mets as has Duffy Dyer, his replacement. Med runners lead at first and second. There are two men out. Bill Hands with a pitch. Swung on, hit on the ground, foul back to third. Over into the Cub dugout. Rebounds onto the playing field. The dog outs are considerably up the line here at Wrigley Field. Generally speaking, they are located behind the bases at first and third. It means a lot of things. It means an overthrow at first is likely to go into the dugout. It also means that if a man strikes out at Wrigley Field, he's got a long march back to that dugout, wishing on every step he were somewhere else. Med runners leading at first and second. Swung on in this. Two strike count. Ball players never notice anything like the distance back there, do they, Ralph? <laughs> they certainly do, Lindsay. When you strike out with a bases loaded, you'd like to have a little button you could press that would just disappear, and you go into the ground and not be seen for about 10 minutes or 10 days. Two strike count, not a Grody, no score in the ball game. Med runners leading at first and second. Swung on and missed, and Bill has it struck out five batters now. <laughs> Three strikeouts in the first inning in two here. The Mets got no runs. They had a hit, a hit bat from no errors, and two men left. In the middle of the second inning, the score is the Mets nothing and the Cubs nothing. <laughs> All roads lead to Carmody, Ford, and Mercury at the junction of routes 29 and 40 in busy Greenwich. Come to Carmody Carland and see their big selection of Fords in stock. You'll find Torinos, Mustangs, Thunderbirds, Falcons, and the new Maverick in dozens of different body styles. Remember, you can't say Carmody without saying car. And for the best deal in a car, see the men at Carmody Ford, a good bunch of guys to do business with. Before you buy, check the Carmody deal. You'll like doing business at Carmody. Their overhead is low, and at Carmody Ford, everybody works to serve their customers. There are no padded payrolls. Every dollar you pay goes into automobile value. Take the pleasant drive to Greenwich. It's only minutes to Carmody, your country Ford dealer. For the best deal in a car, see the men at Carmody Ford and Mercury. You can't say Carmody without saying car, and the best deal in a car is at Carmody Ford and Mercury at the junction of Route 29 and 40 in busy Greenwich. Action scheduled in the major leagues. In the National League tonight, the Giants are at San Diego. It'll be Rich Robertson 2-2 two two against Al Sanzarini 1-4. The Houston Astros are at Los Angeles against the Dodgers. Then the Lamaster 2-3 against Claude Osteen 3-3. Three three. The Pittsburgh Pirates are at St. Louis. Bob Moose 1-3 against Bob Gibson 2-1. Montreal is at Philadelphia. Bill Stoneman 1-6 against Rick Ross 2-1. The Braves and the Reds not scheduled. Now Ron Sanzo is up in the bottom of the second for the Chicago Cubs. He's the field captain hitting 243, four homers, 17 runs batted in. Gary Gentry's pitch, and it's low for a ball. 
The American League is all night action. Washington is Oakland against the A's. Dick Bosman, three and three against Catfish Hunter, five and two. This pitch is outside. Two and one out of Sanzo. Waiting on deck is John Callison. Two other unusual circumstance here. The New York Mets are here in Chicago. And tonight the New York Yankees are in Milwaukee. It's north of here. Swinging a foul ball off and out of play. The Yankees in Milwaukee tonight with John Cumberland, one and one against John Morris, no record. Baltimore with eight consecutive wins is at Minnesota tonight. Jim Palmer, four and two against Jim Cott, four and one. The Chicago White Sox are at Detroit tonight. Tommy John, two and six against Mickey Lolich, four and three. Two one, pitch to Santo, in for a call, strike two. The Boston Red Sox are at California against the Angels. Sonny Siebert, three and one against Andy Messers, Mets four and three. Kansas City is at Cleveland. Dave Moore had 1-0 oh against Dean Chance, 1-3. And, and a foul ball back and out of play. So the count holds. It's two balls and two strikes to Ron Santo. Rico Cardi of the Atlanta Braves, by the way, still has his consecutive game hitting streak going at 30 straight games. There's a pitch outside, and the count's full to Santo. Henry Aaron now needs five base hits to reach the magic 3,000 mark. Here's a payoff pitch. Swung on, hit in the air, foul down the right field, lying and out of play. Wayne Garrett, who missed yesterday's game at Shea Stadium because of having to go to Florida for a draft physical, rejoined the match here this morning. And he will know in about 10 days or two weeks the result of the physical that he underwent. Wayne Garrett, infielder. They are pitch. Swung on and this, And it's a strikeout credited to Gary Gentry as he got Sanzo swinging. He really had a little mustard on that pitch. John Callison. Hitting 277, he has five homers and 18 runs batted in. Gallison came over to the Chicago Cubs from the Philadelphia Phillies in exchange for Dick Selma and Oscar Gamble. Gentry delivers and it's swung on, one half to second. Taken by Boswell, played the Jorgensen. Two men are out. We pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. This is New York Mets Baseball on WKAJ-FM 102.3 in Saratoga Springs, New York. This is Lindsey Nelson with Ralph Tanner and Bob Murphy at Wrigley Field, and Ernie Banks is getting a standing ovation as he comes up. Ernie Banks, the veteran first baseman, and perhaps the most popular professional athlete in the history of Chicago sports, did his 500th career home run yesterday. And he gets a standing ovation this afternoon. Comes up here with two men out and nobody on base. Gentry's pitch, curveball, and he's thrown on and popped up in the short left. Harrelson is out there calling, and the Mets shortstop puts it away for the off. So, Gentry has retired six consecutive batters. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. At the end of two full innings of play, the score is the Mets nothing. And the Chicago Cubs nothing. Globe Supply, downtown Saratoga, is the place to go for rolling and roll-fast bicycles. You will find a large selection to choose from, and they come in all speeds. Every new bicycle purchased at Globe Supply comes fully assembled and carries the 90-day service and maintenance guarantee. You can also have your bike repaired by experienced mechanics at Globe. For all your bicycle accessories and parts for English or American bikes, shop Globe Supply, downtown Saratoga, open daily from 8.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Friday night until 9 p.m. Do you have a mortgage on your home or business property? Have you provided adequate funds to repay your mortgage if something should happen to you? John Hancock has a plan designed to do the job. It's called mortgage cancellation insurance. For a very little outlay, your family can be certain of funds to pay off the mortgage without disturbing your other assets. For information about a John Hancock mortgage cancellation plan, call Ben Yanklowitz, 783-5571, or write Ben Yank, Box J, Latham, New York.
Brooklyn, Chicago, Illinois, the New York Mets, and the Chicago Cubs. We're going to the third inning now, and here for the play-by-play, -play, Ralph Kiner. Lindsay has Bert Wilson, who used to announce ball games here, has said, it's a beautiful day in Chicago. <laughs> it's a what? No matter what the weather was, he always opened up his broadcast with it's a beautiful day in Chicago. Right here, it's 46 degrees, overcast, the chill factor has to be around freezing. And the first pitch to Gary Gentry is in for a call strike. On the mound, Bill Hamm. Gary batting for the first time in the ball game. Right hand batter. Gentry has no hits in 13 times up this year. He takes low on the count, one ball and one strike. Bill Hans has struck out four of the first eight batters he has faced. He has given up one hit, the only hit in the ball game. It was a single by Ken Boswell to right. And Hans back, and the pitch is a curveball outside. Two balls and one strike. Last year, the Mets won 10 and lost eight to the Cubs. And this is the first meeting of a scheduled 18. Mets last year at this point had a record of 14 wins and 17 losses. Their record this year, 15 and 16. And they were seven games behind Chicago last year. This year, they're two and a half games back. Two balls, one strike. Bill Hand into the windup. And Gentry takes the fastball through for call strike two. Hands has a record of five and one. His lifetime record in the major league, 56 wins, 48 losses. Lifetime against the Mets, he has won eight and lost six. And at 2-2, the pitch to Gentry. It is taken low and away, and it's ball three. Third time that Bill Hands has gone to three and two on a Mets batter. Two previous times, he has struck the batter out. Now again at 3-2. And it's low, ball four, and the Mets have Gentry on first base on Bill Hand's first walk. People who care don't litter. The people of Rain don't care. They ask you to keep America beautiful. Now Tommy Agee, the batter. Tommy coming up for the second time. He was struck out his first time up on a one-two curveball. batting 2.31. And hands working from the set position, and the first pitch is a fastball, a hard swing and a miss, and it's strike one. Hands with a fastball over the inside part of the plate, just above the knee. Agee's hit three home runs and driven in nine runs so far this year. No score. Mets have a runner at first base. No one out. We're in the top of the third. Hands back, and the pitch to curve, a wild swing and a miss, and Agee fooled completely by the curveball, now finds the count against him at two strikes. It was announced the breeze was blowing in at about 14 knots of game time. It appears to be stronger than that now. Now pitch low, and it's one and two. The fellow must have been inside, Lindsay, when he took that reading. <laughs> I tell you, he wasn't in this booth. <laughs> Wind blowing in strongly from left field. It's a pitcher's day. And the one-two pitch. It is popped in the air out toward third base. Ron Sano backpedals near the foul line, gets under the ball, and makes the catch in foul territory. That gives the Cubs their first out in the third, and it brings up Bud Harrelson. was struck out his first time up. Went down swinging on a 2-2 fastball. Batting left-handed against the right-hander Bill Ham. Gentry on at first base. He's not being held on by Ernie Banks, who at one time was the top shortstop in the National League. He will be back on... And the first pitch is low, ball one. I imagine Lindsay had show signs of being around a long time when you remembered for first base rather than shortstop. I don't believe too many people remember that Ernie Banks was an outstanding shortstop when he came up. He was an all-star shortstop, and I think you're right. He's played first base so long. That's his position. one old pitch is swung on a miss to count one and one. Ernie Banks came up in 1953, played in 10 ball games, hit two home runs. Out 
I remember him then as I was with the Cubs as a very quiet, very modest fellow. Never said a word. Now at 1 1, the pitch to Harrelson is grounded foul. The count goes to one ball and two strikes. Yesterday was a big day for Ernie getting his 500th homer. So after everybody had gone from the ballpark last night, he held a press conference with four writers who are well known and regulars here in Chicago. They said they did not ask him a single question. He talked for an hour. One and two. Harrelson the batter. One man out, top of the third, no score. Gentry at first base. Here's the pitch. And it is just outside. Two balls, two strikes. Ernie's favorite remark as you come into the ballpark and greet him is, it's such a great day, let's play two. <laughs> and he says it every day. I think he means it, too. He enjoys baseball to the fullest. He enjoys people. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch to Harrelson. Hit hard out toward third. Sano has it. The throw to first base is in time to double up Gary Gentry. So Harrelson hits it to a double play on the line drive. And the side is retired. In the inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, a walk, double play, no one left on base. And the score in the middle of the third. The Mets nothing, the Cubs nothing. Well, Mets fans, we're into another season, and we hope a really great one for your ball club. Friendly Freddy is also going into another season of car washing, a really great one for his club. Friendly Freddy's is the only fully automatic car wash in Saratoga Springs. Their motto is, nothing for you to do but sit back and relax. Friendly Freddy's car wash offers you the quickest and most convenient car washing service in Saratoga. They're located on High Rock Avenue, one block off Lake Avenue. At Friendly Freddy's, they have a facility for everyone. A coin-operated wash for the do-it-yourselfers, the most up-to-date vacuum cleaners, and, of course, the automatic car wash. You just drive in, stay in your automobile, and before you know it, your car is coming out cleaned and, if you like, waxed. All this service for only $1.25. Wax is 50 cents extra. Believe me, Mets fans, this is a bargain with today's inflated prices. Come on in and give them a try. We're going to the bottom of the third. It's a nothing-nothing ball game with the Cubs coming up. Gary Gentry hooked up with Bill Hands in the first game of 18 games between the Mets and Cubs this year. First batter for Gentry will be the center fielder, Jimmy Hall. Jimmy, a left-hand batter, has been up 13 times with one base hit. Gentry has pitched the six batters, retired them all. He has struck out one, and the first pitch to Hall, a call strike. One time, going back quite a few years, Jimmy Hall was rumored to be in a trade for Ron Hunt. That was when Hall was with Minnesota. One strike pitch, change up, grounded foul. The count at strike two. Times have changed. The Cubs got Jimmy Hall from the Yankees. The trade was consummated in the latter part of the season, and at one point, it looked as though Hall might be a big aid to Chicago in their drive against the Mets for the Eastern Division Championship of the National League. It did not materialize that way. Gentry taking the sign from Jerry Grody. And now the two-strike pitch is on its way. And it's just low on the count of one and two. One ball, two strikes. Signs go out. Gentry takes off the first set, now takes the second. And the one-two pitch. It's a fastball blaze right through the heart of the plate, and Hall is left there motionless. Strike three calls. So Gentry on the blazing fastball picks up a second strikeout. And it brings up the catcher, Jack Hyatt. Jack has had one time at bat as a Chicago Cub, and he got a base hit. That was in yesterday's ball game against Atlanta. Overall, he's batting 341 with 15 hits and 44 times up. And the right-hand hitter takes the first pitch for a call strike. He was in a trade that sent Boots Day to the Montreal Expos yesterday. One strike count. 
No score in the ball game. One man out, bottom half of the third. And Gary Gentry with his next pitch. And it's low. One ball and one strike. Gentry into the windup and at 1 1. The pitch is fouled back on the screen back of home plate and the count goes to 1 and 2. Not much has been done to so called beautiful Wrigley Field since last year. There is one change and they have erected a screen that extends almost diagonally away from the wall in the bleacher area. The screen has been put there to keep the bleacher bums from coming out on the field. Curveball back, a half swing, and a miss at strike three. So Gentry with his third strikeout, picking up Jack Hyatt. That brings up Bill Hand. The screen that extends out cuts about a foot or so off the distance that a home run has to be hit. First pitch to Bill Hands, a call strike. Bill has been up 13 times with no hit. Other than that, ballpark looks about the same. Next pitch is in for a call strike two. It's 355 down the left field line, 353 down the right. A well area there, and then the field dimensions come in. And in right center and left center, 368. Next pitch is outside the count one and two. That is 400 feet to straightaway center field. Today, the wind blowing in very strongly from left field. The one two pitch by Gentry. It's in for a call strike three, and Gentry has struck out the side. His second, third, and fourth strikeouts. And now Gary has pitched the nine, and he has picked them all up. And the score at the end of three the Mets nothing, the Cubs nothing. Harry never bought a car he didn't love. Stick with me, beautiful. We'll go places. Trouble is, Harry would always trade in his cars every year. Well, nothing lasts forever, sweetheart. Fickle? Not Harry. It's just that all his four-wheel flames seemed to lose their pep and power as the miles went by. Sorry, honey, but you just ain't got it anymore. Then Harry ran into the man with all the right answers. I say, Mr. Granatelli, you're the expert. Uh, lay some right answers on me. STP gas treatment. You'll feel the difference. You don't say. But he did say, because STP gasoline treatment helps restore your car's lost pep and power. STP gas treatment prolongs engine life, cleans and tunes your engine as you drive. So if you're a one-car man at heart, keep that spark alive with STP gas treatment. From now on, it's you and me and STP gas treatment, baby. You'll feel the difference for the very first can. Let's try that again. You'll feel the difference for the very first can. We're going now to the top of the fourth inning, the scoreless ball game. Met to have the only base hit. It was a single by Ken Boswell in the second inning. Ken will be the third batter in this inning as Dave Marshall leads off for the Mets against Bill Hands. It'll be Dave Marshall, Art Chansky, and then Ken Boswell. Both pitchers have been strong in the strikeout department. Hands has struck out five, and Gentry has struck out four. It is a pitcher's day here in Chicago, a cold day. Wind boy it is. Dave Marshall was struck out on a 3-2 fastball his first time up. Dave batting at 314, playing in left field. He has one home run. It was a grand slammer against his former teammate, the San Francisco Giants. He came off Gaylord Perry. First pitch by hand. The curve in for call strike. Checking the sign. And the pitch back. Fastball hit foul. Over toward the third base side into the stands out of play. So they count a quick strike two against Dave Marshall. Yesterday's ball game, Marshall tied a Met Club record with three doubles. Mets will open up their next homestand with the Chicago Cubs playing the four-game series over the weekend starting on the 22nd Friday night. Day game on the 23rd Saturday and a doubleheader on Sunday the 24th. And at two strikes, the pitch to Marshall is swung on a miss. And Bill Hands has his sixth strikeout. 
Drake, can you name the goal of us going off the hot down from Oshkosh to Miami to L.A.? It's Roy Oakland Cola, the one with the kicky tape. Now the batter will be Art Chemsky. Art grounded to the second baseman his first time up. Art batting 318. He has been hitting the ball well of late. He's had three home runs in his last two series. And the first pitch bounces in the dirt in front of the plate ball one. Art has driven in 14 runs. Club leader is John Clendenon, who is not playing with 16. John also leads the club in home runs with four. That's going for a left-hand hitting lineup against the strong Troy of Bill Hams, a right-hander. The 1 0 pitch to Shamsky. Swung out of this. 1 and 1. Bill Hands acquired from, from the San Francisco Giants. Also, Randy Huntley was in that deal. The 1 1 delivery. Fastball low and away. Two balls, one strike. Outfield straight away. Infield also playing about six straight away. Pitch back to Chesky in there for a call strike two. It's two and two. Crowd here today has been held down by the cold weather. Cubs last year had a big year at tennis wise, setting their all time high. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Curveball just low. Shansky was starting to swing that held up. So the count full of three balls and two strikes. And for those of you who have not been to Wrigley Field, this is the only Major League ballpark that does not have light. They play all day, day baseball here. And it's 3 2. The pitch to Shansky. It is hit the deep right field. Going way back. It's going, going, and it is over the wall. with a home run to right field and the Mets lead one and nothing. Jansky getting his fourth home run of the year. He's now tied with Don Clendenin for the club lead. The Mets in front one nothing on their second base hit, and the batter coming up is Ken Boswell, who singled the right for their first back in the second. Archansky now is at four home runs in his last five games. He started against Robertson of the Giants, got Marshall of the Giants, and then he got Morton of the x -Fors. First pitch is ball one. Boswell batting 297. He has two home runs, 11 runs batted in. Mets leading 1-0 on Chamsky's home run. One man out, top of the floor. Next pitch is hit out toward left field. Billy Williams hesitates and comes in and makes the play. Two men away. That brings up Mike Jorgensen. We were talking about the attendance. Cubs last year drew 1,674,993 at home to set their all-time high. First pitch to Jorgensen is a swinging strike, strike one. Jorgensen, the left-hand batter, Batting at 171. He turned into a brilliant play at first base on Billy Williams earlier in this ball game. Then he pops the next pitch up, but it's going out of play on the third base side. So Bill Hands with a strike two count on the rookie first baseman. And at two strikes, the pitch is high. Fastball missing, one and two. And at 
one two to pitch to Jorgensen. It is swung on and missed. And that is strikeout number seven in four innings for Bill Hand. But in the inning, the Mets take the lead on the home run by Art Jamsky. One run, one hit. No errors and no one left on base. And the score, in the middle of the fourth inning, the Mets won the Cubs nothing. Having a problem in deciding where to take your group on its next outing? If so, let the Mets Group Sales Department solve it for you. This department is manned by experts in handling both men's and women's groups. These same specialists encourage community and civic organizations, social and fraternal clubs, youth, family, and athletic groups to take in a Mets ball game and enjoy a day at Shea. In addition to providing group ticket sales for a ball game, our representatives will be happy to furnish you with all the details of the beautiful restaurants at Shea Stadium, which are available for parties, large or small, up to 700 persons. For groups of 100 or more, recognition will be given to your organization on the changeable message scoreboard here at Shea. You can easily obtain additional information simply by writing to Group Sales Manager, Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York, 11368. Or, if you like, telephone 212-672-3000. The representative handling your area will be more than happy to personally speak before your men's or women's group, large or small, and explain all the details. Call or write today and enjoy a day at Shea. We're now going to the bottom of the fourth inning. And the first batter for the Cubs as they come up, really more nothing. John Kessinger. For the Mets, Gary Gentry. Gary now starting again at the top of the batting order after working the first three. One, two, three. Gentry hit a soft line drive to the second baseman Boswell his first time up. He's batting left-handed against the right-hander and has an average of 306. And the first pitch is outside a ball, and Kessinger was out to bunt his way on. Don is a good bunter. Who's the all-star shortstop for the National League last year? Pitch back to the left-hand batter, and it's outside ball two. Two and all. It'll be Don Kessinger, Glenn Beckert, and Billy Williams. Kessinger brought a six-game hitting streak into this ball game. And it's 2-0. The pitch is in for a call strike. Kessinger scored 109 runs last year for the Cubs. He had 38 doubles. And a swing and a miss, and it's two and two. That was second in the leg. He also had the most stolen bases for the Cubs, 11. They're not a running club. Two balls, two strikes. And a swing and a miss with a fastball, and that is the fourth consecutive strikeout. So, Gary Gentry with his fifth strikeout in the ball game, four in a row. And he'll now pitch to Glenn Beckett. For the Mets, Wayne Garrett has taken over at third base. Joe Foy was hit by a pitch ball on the wrist, and it has stiffened up, and he has been taken out of the ball game. Beckert swings and misses, strike one. Gentry pass today. Beckert grounded to the second baseman his first time up. He brought a five-game inning streak into this ball game. Mets lead one nothing. One man out in the bottom of the fourth. Next pitch, a half swing, and he held off. Dave Davidson, the home plate umpire, saying he did not go far enough, so it's the ball. One and one. Beckert batting 298. And the next pitch is popped up in foul territory. Jorgensen coming in. He has some room to get to it. He moves over near the wall and makes a fine running catch. Mike Jorgensen contending with the brick wall right in front of his stands, and he had a long way to go with the wind blowing the ball away from him, and he caught the ball right up against the wall. So two and away. Good play by Mike Jorgensen. Second of the ball game and brings up Billy Williams, and he turned into play on Billy Williams that was as good as you can make. Williams did a shot to first base, and Mike went to his glove side and flagged it down. A one hopper with a fine, fine catch. 
Williams, the left hand batter, hitting at 259. He has 12 home runs and 34 runs batted in. And he takes inside a ball. Mets lead him 1 0. Williams last year led the club and hit him with a 293 average, and he takes a call strike. It's 1 and 1. He also had the most total bases, 304. Most triple 10. He is playing in his 1,000th, 11th ball game. And a pitch blowing away at ball two. Two balls and one strike. He has played in more consecutive ball games than any National Leaguer. He's still a long way from the record set by Lou Gehrig, almost halfway there. He said he would not be able to do it if he had to do it all over again. The 2 1 pitch. Foul back against the screen, 2 and 2. Now Billy is continuing the streak. Still playing it out, even though he's run over a thousand. Now a foul ball and a check swing into the stands. The count remains at two and two. Sort of like the blind date you might have had when you were a kid. He's sort of stuck with that hitting streak. Could say game streak. Two balls, two strikes. Two men out, Mets lead one nothing. Bottom of the fourth inning. And a swing and a miss, and Gentry has picked up his sixth strikeout. And Jerry Gentry has now pitched the 12 batters, and he has got them all. And the score at the end of four, the Mets won the Cubs nothing. We go into the top half of the fifth inning. Before we do, we pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. This is your New York Mets baseball station in Saratoga Springs, New York, WKAJ-FM 102.3 on your dial. Chicago, top of the fifth, and Wayne Garrett's up for the Mets for his first time, hitting 182, one homer and three runs batted in. Bill Hands with a pitch, and it's low for a ball. Joe Foy started at third base for the New York Mets. He was hit by a pitch ball his first time up, and his left wrist on which he was hit began to stiffen up, so he was replaced last inning by Wayne Garrett. There's a swing and a drive in the left center field. Could be an in-betweener for Garrett. It's going on to the wall. Garrett's on his way to second. Picked up by center fielder Jimmy Hall and played back. And Garrett leads off with a double here in the top half of the fifth inning. Garrett had gone to Florida for a draft physical, and he just returned this morning. Five out of the seven hits that Garrett has had this year have been extra base hits. Now, Jerry Grody comes up. He's the number eight man in the order, so he looks down to sign man Eddie Yost at third to see how manager Gil Hodges wants to play it. Wayne Garrett moves out to the on-deck circle. That was only the third hit in this ball game. Here's the pitch to Grody. Front on, and hit in the air to center field. Jimmy Hall has it lined up. Garrett goes back to tag at second. Now he starts for third, and here's Hall's throw, and at third he is... Safe at third base. A close play. And the redhead was sliding to the outside and got in there underneath the tag of Ron Sanzo. So they moved the runner over in any case. One away. And now it is Gentry coming up. The Mets have a one nothing lead. The Chicago Cubs bring the infield in to try to choke off the possible run at the plate. The Mets would like to add another counter right here. One man, outrunner at third. Gentry's run up one time and he walked. Right hand batter, here's the pitch to Gentry. Swung on and missed it, strike one. Gentry hasn't had a base hit this season. But he'd like to cash one in right here. Waiting on deck is Tommy Agee for the Mets. Here batting in the top of the fifth. Bill Hands with a record of five wins and one loss. Sets up off the stretch to old Garrett. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. It's strike two to Gary Gentry. He again looks at the sign. Looks hard at the sign of Eddie Yost. 
The coach at third base. Garrett now leads down the line. Here's the pitch. Swung on in on the ground, and it's short stop. It's off the glove of Kessinger, and the run scores. And holding it first is Jerry Gentry. It's scored as a base hit, and it'll be a run bat at the end of the Mets are out in front by a score of two to nothing. With the infield in, that ball was headed toward the hole, so Kessinger had to try a backhand stab. He didn't pull it off, and it rolled in behind the third baseman, Ron Santo. Gentry's on his first, with his first base hit, and his first run bat at the end of this season. One man out, runner at first, and Tommy Agee's up. He has struck out and fouled out to third base so far. He'll hand for the pitch that's fouled off to the right side and out of play. Strike one to Agee. Harrelson's next in the batting order. The Mets two and the Chicago Cubs netting. They'll be playing here again tomorrow afternoon. We'll be on the air at 2.25 p.m. New York time to bring you that one. Jerry Kuzman against Ferguson Jenkins. That pitch is in for a call strike to Agee. Tommy Agee is well known in this town. He played for the Chicago White Sox on the south side and in 1966 was Rookie of the Year in the American League while playing for the Chicago White Sox. Gentry leads it first. Here's a two-strike delivery start on lower and away. So it goes to one and two now to Agee. Fresh day in Chicago with a temperature in the mid 40s. Time call as Agee steps back out of the batter's box. This will be a 1 2 delivery. Swung on it on the ground to Santo at third. He bobbles it now, scrambles out. He can't pick it up. And Agee's on it first. Gentry holds it second. That is scored as an error. Charge against Santo at third. It is an error. Charge against the third baseman. The Mets have runners at first and second. One man out and Bud Harrelson is coming up. Shortstop Don Kessinger has walked over to the mound now for a word with Bill Hand. Catcher Jackie Hyatt walks halfway out. Now he's going all the way to the mound. Harrelson is struck out and lined out to third into a double play. Harrelson's batting average for the season now stands at 295. Gentry at second, A.G. at first the stretch. Bill Hand with the pitch to Harrelson. And it's low for a ball. Dave Marshall's the on-deck batter. Again, runners lead at first and second. Harrelson's pitch. Or rather, a hand pitch to Harrison, hit on the ground to second, has one in the throw to first, and a double play, and Yogi Berra argues the call with Augie Donatelli at first. Harrison grounding to second, to back it over to Kessinger, and on the bank, a 4-6-3 double play, and the side is retired. So it is one run on two hits, there was a Cub error, and there was one left. So in the middle of the fifth inning, the score is the New York Mets 2 and the Chicago Cubs nothing. I am a going on a long journey. I will be following the spring. It is high time that I was searching for the natural thing. At Rheingold, we brew beer with the natural things. Rheingold takes the time to find the best barley, corn, hops, and water. Rheingold takes the time to carbonate itself naturally. Rheingold takes the time to lager the beer to a good extra dry natural taste. But when it's good and ready, we turn on the speed. Because what good is a fresh, natural tasting beer if we don't get it to you that way? Natural Rheingold. It is high time that I was searching for the natural thing. 
Triangle Breweries Incorporated, New York, New York, and Orange, New Jersey, ask you to help keep America beautiful. began at the Polo Grounds in New York with the New York Mets that it certainly caught on here at Wrigley Field, and that's the custom of baseball banners. There are youngsters all over this park with club banners on bed sheets. One down there says, Clamp the Champ. Ron Panzo is coming up to lead off for the Chicago Cubs. He's been up one time and he struck out. Gary Gentry is the pitcher for the New York Mets. He has struck out six of the 12 batters that he has faced. The Mets are leading by a score of two to nothing. Gentry's pitch to the right-hand batter, and it is low for a ball. Ron Santo hits cleanup in the batting order of manager Leo DeRocher's cup. Santo's hitting 241. The Cubs fans have not yet forgiven the New York Mets for overtaking their Cubbies last year and going on to the World Championship. The Cubs led in the Eastern Division of the National League for most of the season until September 10th, as a matter of fact. From opening day until September 10th. Here's a pitch high and away. The Mets took over on September 10th and clinched the title on the 24th. The Mets were never out of first place after moving into first on the night of September 10th. 2-0 and oh is the count out of Ron Santo. Gentry's pitch goes high, and he's down behind now, 3-0. and oh. Gary Gentry, who was a base runner last inning, has now gone 3-0 and oh to Ron Sanzo, batting here in the bottom of the fifth. Johnny Callison's on deck. This is in for a call strike. Sanzo is taking, and it's 3-1. and one. Sando looked down to the sign man, Peanuts Lowry, at third base. Lowry was the third base coach in Montreal last year. That pitch is high, and there's the first base runner for the Chicago Cubs. Gentry had pitched perfect baseball until that point. He had retired 12 consecutive batters. He slams the rosin bag down. The 3-1 pitch was high, and the Cubs have a base runner. Gallison is up. He's been up one time, and he grounded out second to first. Santo takes his lead at first base. Gary Gentry looks for Jerry Grody's sign, has it now. And the pitch is low and away for a ball. Ernie Banks is next in the order for the Cubs. Now the pitch, and it's high. So Gentry, having walked, Sando has gone behind 2-0 and out of Callison. But Harrelson at short comes into the mound now to try to settle Gentry down a little bit. Sometimes, when a pitcher is going, like Gentry was, perfect baseball through four innings. The fact of being a base runner throughout an inning can uh, upset his rhythm a little bit. And Gentry's rhythm is obviously a little bit upset here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. This will be a 2-0 delivery. Swung on and foul back. 2-1. It was against the Chicago Cubs at Shea Stadium last year that Tom Seaver pitched what he refers to as his imperfect game. Seaver went eight in the third inning. He was one man out in the ninth. He had a perfect game going, and then Jimmy Qual singled the left center field. Here's a 2-1 pitch, and it's right in there for a call strike at the knee. Gentry cranked down on that one. He had been riding him high. He cranked that one down at the knee. It's a fastball. Two balls and two strikes to Callison. General manager Bob Sheffing of the Mets accompanied the team on this trip. He got to Wrigley Field today. He had to borrow a top coat. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Swung on. Hit on the ground. is short. Harrelson goes to the bag. There's one. Through the first, a double play. A 6 3 double play. Harrelson to Jorgensen. Burt took the ball about a half a dozen steps from the bag, but figured rightly he could get there before Boswell could. Ernie Banks 
is coming up. He's been up one time, and he popped out to shortstop. Leo DeRocher attempted to retire back in 1966, and he took over the Cubs. Here's a pitch low for a ball, but Banks just keeps coming back. And it's in for a call stop. Had a long talk with Banks in the Cubs clubhouse today. He's one of the most even tempered men I've ever known, and he said that the daily baseball is his therapy. Here's a 1 1 pitch. It's low for a ball, 2 and 1. The Mets lead here by a score of 2 nothing. Two on delivery. Strong on and foul back. It's out of play. Two two. The atmosphere in the Chicago clubhouse was uh, just a little bit tougher than it ordinarily is for a ball game this time of the year. A first meeting of the Cubs with the world champion New York Mets obviously uh, meant something to them. Here's a pitch inside for ball. It's three and two now to Ernie Banks. the payoff pitch swung on and popped up foul to the right side the wind's going to take it over now near the sand Grody is trying to get to it it's way back out of play as that one was popped up had there been no wind blowing or had the wind been blowing out it would have been playable but the wind is blowing in from left field here at a pretty brisk pace this afternoon so that foul pop was taken back into the field boxes count holds it three and two to bank with two men out nobody on base There is no other afternoon action going in the major league. Here's a foul ball off to the right side again. Same as before. It's going to go back into the lower field boxes. Count continues three and two. When the Mets arrived at their hotel in the loop area of downtown Chicago last night, they were greeted with a sign in the lobby that said, Welcome to the New York Mets, world champions of baseball. Again, a 3-2 delivery. Swung on and hit on the ground foul off to the left side. So it's still 3-2. and two. Gentry got that pitch down. This will be a payoff pitch. Once again, it's on the way. Curveball is hit on the ground to third. Big hop to Garrett. He throws on in time, and the side is up. So although he walked the batter and the Cubs out of base, when the Gentry still through five innings has faced only 15 batters because Sando is a race on the double play. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left. And at the end of five full innings of play, the score is the New York Mets two and the Chicago Cubs nothing. Here's an interesting baseball fact presented by Dunkin' Donuts, South Broadway in Saratoga. Prior to 1900, Hugh Duffy of Boston had a batting average of 438. Since 1900, Rogers Hornsby of St. Louis holds that record. Batting in more games, Hornsby's average was 424, a record set in 1924. And here's a donut fact. Dunkin' Donuts, 203 South Broadway in Saratoga Springs, is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So stop in any time for a hot cup of coffee and any one of their 52 varieties of donuts. That's Dunkin' Donuts, 203 South Broadway, Saratoga. Here's a listening reminder for WKAJ sport fans. Complete summaries of sports are heard three times daily on WKAJ radio. An early morning summary with scores from the previous night games is heard at 745. A midday summary heard right after our noontime expanded news at 1215. And Larry Farnell reports on worldwide sports and local and area sports events weekdays Monday through Friday at 430. Ball scores aired when received on WKAJ radio. Here at Wrigley Field in Chicago, 
The New York Mets are leading the Cubs by a score of two to nothing. And it's Dave Marshall to lead off for the Mets. He's the number three man in the batting order. He's been up twice and he struck out both times. Yesterday he had three doubles and a walk against the Montreal Expos, which earned him another start in left field here today. Left hand batter facing right hand pitcher Bill Hands, who delivers a breaking pitch, swung on and missed the strike one. Art Chamsky is waiting on deck. Chamsky's home run in the fourth inning. Put the Mets out in front. They had another in the fifth inning. And Gary Gentry brought in Wayne Garrett, who had let off with a double. Here's a fastball hit on the ground to second. It's taken by Glenn Beckett and played on the bank, and Marshall is out. That'll bring up Art Chamsky. Chamsky. Right now. Uh huh. Right. No, I have the paper stand here in the lead fun. I wanted to, uh, the figures. facilities can be restored. Please stand by. So it's no runs, no hits, no errors, none left. And at the end of six full innings of play, the score is the Mets two and the Cubs nothing. Let's raise gardens on Lake Avenue on the old Schuylerville Road. Handle the filling of your urns for Memorial Day. Call 584-3236 and all the necessary arrangements will be made. And you can either bring your urns to Sprague or for a small additional charge, your urns will be filled at the cemetery. Why not call Sprague Gardens 584-3236 and make your wishes known. At Strade's Gardens, you'll find a large selection of geraniums, petunias, spikes, and vines. You'll also find an excellent choice of bedding plants and roses. In roses, choose from such well-known names as Jackson and Perkins, Star, and Ball. Strade's Gardens is just a little out of the way, but they offer big savings, and the trip is well worth the little time it takes. They are just two miles from downtown Saratoga, out Lake Avenue on the old Schuylerville Road, or call Ted and Doris, and they'll be happy to give you directions. Remember, call early for Memorial Day needs. Bring your urns to Strade's Gardens or have them filled at the cemetery. Call 584-3236. Now here at Wrigley Field, we are going to the seventh inning, New York leading Chicago by a score of 2 nothing. We have been advised that there was trouble in our broadcast line during the last half inning. The last half inning with the Chicago Cubs facing Gary Gentry. Center fielder Jimmy Hall grounded out second to first. The catcher Jack Hyatt bounced out third to first. And the pitcher Bill Hands was struck out. Cubs went down one, two, three, no runs, no hits, no errors, none left. Mike Jorgensen up against Bill Hands in the top half of the seventh. Had a swing and a miss and a curveball strike one. Bill Hands has struck out eight. Gary Gentry has struck out seven. Jorgensen has been up twice and both times been struck out. That's two runs on four hits. Here's the pitch on the way. Breaking ball in the dirt and low outside. One ball, one strike. Wayne Garrett is deck and then Jerry Grody. For the Mets in the seventh inning, six, seven, and eight in their batting order. The one-one delivery. Low and inside, two balls and a strike. Overcast skies here on the lakefront in Chicago. Temperature about 46 degrees. And a biting wind coming in off the lake, blowing from left toward right. The two-one delivery. Swing and a miss. It's two and two on Mike Jorgensen.
Yogi Berra coaching at first, Eddie Yost coaching at third. Now, Bill Hands has his sign. Here's the pitch on the way. Foul ball, well hit deep down the left field line with no play. It'll be over in the stands. Two delivery by the right-hander. Breaking ball just outside. Jorgensen checked his swing just in time. And now we have a full count on Mike three and two. Art Shamsky drove in New York's fourth first run today with a home run. His fourth home run in five games. And Gary Gentry is single in the second run. Pitching three and two. And a foul ball back toward the crowd. No play. The count stays the same. Messed up against two 20 game winners in the series. Bill Hands today and Ferguson Jenkins tomorrow. Last year, Hands won 20, Jenkins won 21. Now, Hands over the head. Here's the pitch on the way. And again, it's fouled off to the left, back into the stands, no play. Second time today that Jorgensen has gotten into a duel with Bill Hands. The first time up, he fouled off about four before he finally was struck out. Top of the seventh inning, nobody on, nobody out. Pitching three and two. Ball four, it's outside on a fastball. Jorgensen goes to first. It brings up Garrett, and we pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. This is your New York Mets baseball station in Saratoga Springs, New York, WKAJ-FM 102.3 on your dial. Bob Murphy with Lindsey Nelson and Ralph Kainer. We're in the top of the seventh in Chicago. Wayne Garrett is the batter. The Cubs look for the possibility of the sacrifice. Bunny turns to Bunt, does an offer. Outside, Please stand by. We have temporarily lost, once again, our signal from Chicago. start this ball game. He's been up only twice. He came in the ball game because Foy was hit by a pitch. And now in two times at bat he has a double and a triple. Cubs bring the infield in. Jerry Grody the batter. Mets now lead 3-0. Hank Gary will go back to work in the Cub bullpen. And the pitch to Grody is outside ball one. Jerry has struck out and flied to center, and nothing for two. Mets now have three runs on five hits. Three of the five hits today have been extra base hits. The infield is in. The pitch to Grody, ground ball hit down to third foul. No play. Mets would dearly love to pick up the runner at third, Wayne Garrett. 
That's leading now by a score of 3 nothing. Nobody out. But with a pitcher on deck, it would seem that the Mets would like to get it right here with Jerry Grody. And a ground ball, base hit down the left field line. The runner will come home. In the score, Wayne Garrett, it is four to nothing as Grody pulled a ground shot between Sano and the bag. Ralph, that was like threading a needle because Sano was keeping Garrett close over there. It looked like he only had about a foot to shoot at. The thing that made the play possible was the fact that the ball was about a half hop type ball, and Sano sort of gave it a boy and knock it down sweep, and he couldn't quite get his glove on it, and it went through a very narrow hole. Gary Gentry up in a bunt situation. He turns to bunt and lays off the pitch's high ball one. Must now lead the Cubs 4 0 in the seventh inning. A walk, a three base hit, and a single. Two runs around in the top of the seventh. Nobody out as hands checks the runner. Gentry turns around, bunch foul off to the right. One ball, one strike. Veteran left hander Hank and Gary warming up in the Chicago Cub bullpen. Let's now have four runs on six hits off Bill Hand. Let's came into Chicago, throwing the Cubs by two and a half games in the standard. Now the one-one delivery and a fastball over for a call strike. Certainly one of the turning points of the season last year for the Mets was the first time they came into Chicago. It was in May. They came in to play a four-game weekend series, and they lost Friday and Saturday. Had they lost the doubleheader on Sunday, they would have been buried. But they bounced back on the pitching of Doug McGraw and Tom Seaver to win the Sunday doubleheader, and that was one of the biggest doubleheader wins of the entire year. So they went out of Chicago with a split of the four-game series after losing the first two. One ball, two strikes to Gentry. He turns to bunt. Tries the bunt and misses strike three. The ninth strikeout in the ball game for Bill Ham. One man away, it will bring up Tabby Agee at the top of the batting order. Tommy Hope for three this afternoon has struck out, fouled out, and reached safely on an error charge to Ron Sano. Four nothing New York. We're in the seventh. Right-hander Bill Hands delivers a swing and a missed strike one. That ninth strikeout for Bill Hands represents a personal high for him this year. He struck out eight men in a game early this year against the Phillies. So nine, nine is a new high for him. Throw to first, not in time. Jerry Grody, who singled a run in, scrambles back to first base. And the pitch thrown to Tommy Agee he goes for a breaking ball and misses. He tried to hold up on his swing. He was badly fooled by Bill Hans. Hans can make you look bad. Without a doubt, the deal the Cubs made when they got Bill Hans has to be one of the best trades in Cub baseball history. They not only got Bill Hans, who last year won 20 games, but they got Randy Henley. And they gave up Lindy McDaniel and Don Landrum. Now a swing on a best strike three. Easy goes down swinging. The tenth strikeout for Bill Hans. Two men away in the batter, Bud Harrelson. Bud who for three today has struck out, lined into a double play, and bounced into a double play. So here's Bud Harrelson, who rarely ever hits into a double play, and today he's hit into two of them. And the pitch by the right-hander. A knee-high fastball, strike one call. Bud Harrelson hitting 293. Bud has 10 RBIs and 10 stolen bases. And a line drive foul off to the left, no play. Bill Hands with a two-strike advantage. Bud Harrelson has had 36 hits. In 31 ball games this year, and 12 of the 36 have been extra base hits. 
But hitting left against Bill Hans, chokes up on the handle of the bat. Mets lead 4 0. We're in the seventh. And the pitch by Hans, way outside, one ball, two strikes. Two runs in here at the top of the seventh. Mike Jorgensen walked on three and two to get it started. Wayne Garrett tripled to right center, scoring Jorgensen, and Grody singled to bring in Garrett Garrett. And a wild pitch that goes to the backstop. Moving over into scoring position, Jerry Grody. Well, Jerry Grody goes into scoring position. And the count is two and two to Bud Harrelson. Bill Hans came into this game 5-1 and one on the year with a 2.2 earned run average. Tom Seaver has the best winning percentage, 6-1. and one. Bill Hans, Gary Nolan, and Wayne Simpson of Cincinnati, those three all 5-1 and one right behind Tom Seaver. And Jim Merritt of the Reds has won 7 now and lost 2. He won last night. 2-2 two -two delivery. Fouled. Back toward the screen. No play. Well, Cincinnati off to a great start, and they have been getting pitching, which is what they needed. They have the hitting. So this early in the season, the Reds have Jim Merritt with a record of seven and two. Wayne Simpson, a rookie, is five and one, and Gary Nolan is five and one. The two-two delivery had a ground ball hit the shortstop, fielded by Don Kessinger. He guns it across the diamond and in time for the outside retire. Two runs. Two hits, no errors, one left on. And the score in the middle of the seventh at Wrigley Field. The New York Mets four and the Chicago Cubs nothing. Remember when it took two hands to hold a hamburger? It still does at McDonald's. We call our two-fisted hamburger Big Mac. Two 100% beef hamburgers, lettuce, cheese, pickles, and McDonald's own special sauce. Big Mac, the meal disguised as a sandwich. At McDonald's, your kind of place. Remember when you were a kid how you hated to wait? And now sometimes you can't afford to wait, especially if you want to get back to work. McDonald's understands. When you step up to our counter and order a Big Mac, Coke, and French fries, you get them in a hurry. At McDonald's, we can serve a complete dinner for four in about 30 seconds. So whenever you want to save time, give McDonald's fast service a try. McDonald's is your kind of place. Gillette Platinum Plus makes every shave the shave you've always wanted and more. Last of the seventh, Don Kessinger will lead off against Gary Gentry. Kessinger, the Cubs shortstop and leadoff batter, has lined out to Ken Boswell and been struck out, nothing for two. Gentry has walked one and struck out seven. Now the windup by Gary. Here's the pitch. Fastball, the tie, one ball and no strike. Over the first six innings, Gentry has faced just 18 batters. Cubs have had one base runner, Sando. He was erased in a double play. And the pitch by Gentry. Fouled back into the screen. No play. One ball and one strike. One ball, one strike. Glenn Beckert is on deck and then Billy Williams. First three men in the Cub batting order. Kessinger and Beckert both came into the game batting over 300. The 1 1 delivery, a let up by Gentry outside to high, two balls and one strike. Last year, Kessinger at 273. He takes high, ball three, three and one. Kessinger, a switch hitter. Tall, rangy shortstop, much like Marty Marion. 
He made himself into a switch hitter after coming to the big league. And a strike on the outside corner, three and two. Cubs trailing by four. Kessins are trying to coax the walk as he leads off the last of the seventh. Now the windup by Gentry. Here's the pitch. Foul down the left field line. No play going beyond the Cub bullpen and back into the stand. Archie Reynolds warming up in the Cub bullpen. Mets lead 4 0, last half of the seventh. 3 2 delivery. Ground ball right at Kenny Boswell. He's up with it. Throws on to Ferguson. That retires Kessinger. Now Glenn Becker at the second baseman. He has bounced out to second and fouled out to Jorgensen, who made a wreck, an excellent play running into the cement barrier, but not hurting himself. Glenn Becker. The most difficult man to strike out of the National League. He struck out only 24 times all last year. High foul pop up again. Jorgensen comes over. Back comes Grody. And he reaches over the railing, but no play. Grody trying to reach over the railing, but he wasn't getting any cooperation, as you would imagine, from the Cub fan. One out and nobody on in the seventh. Mets lead 4 nothing. Jim Colburn, also a right-hander, starts going to work now in the Cub bullpen. So they have Archie Reynolds and Jim Colburn working. Line drive at the right field. Coming again quickly, Shamsky, and he has it. Art Shamsky racing straight in to pick off the line drive about shoulder high. That line drive, when it first went off the bat, looked like it was going to sink rapidly. But it stayed up, and it was not a difficult catch for Art Shamsky. Now two outs and nobody on in the seventh. Billy Williams was robbed of the hit on a beautiful play by Mike Jorgensen in the first inning. He hit a wicked low line drive down to first and Jorgensen snagged it. But Williams was struck out in the fourth inning. Now Gentry has his sign from Grody. Here's the pitch on the way. Breaking ball outside. One ball and no strike. New York in front, 4 0. Next pitch by Gentry. He pops it up, and it'll be playable on the left side of the infield. Wayne Garrett near third in fair territory makes the catch. Well, now the tension is going to start mounting. In the seventh inning, another 1 2 3 inning for Gary Gentry. Only one Cub has reached base, and that was Sano on a walk in the fifth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left. And at the end of the seven, the New York Mets four, the Chicago Cubs nothing. Well, the excitement is building here at Wrigley Field. Mets come on to hit on the top of the eighth inning, leading the Cubs by a score of four nothing. Dave Marshall, a batting third, will be hitting against Bill Hans. Dave has struck out twice and bounced out, nothing for three. Hans, the right-hander, delivers. And a curve at the knee, strike one call. For the New York Mets in today's game, Hart Shamsky made it one nothing with a home run. Gary Gentry singled in the second run. Wayne Garrett tripled in the third, and Jerry Grody singled in the fourth. Line to the air to right field by Marshall coming over. Callison, and he makes the cut. Well hit line drive by Dave Marshall. But Callison, knifing toward the line, made an extended glove hand grab. One away on the top of the eighth inning. This will bring up Art Shamsky. Art has one for three. His home run put New York in front one nothing in the fourth inning. He had the big hit in yesterday's game, a two-run homer in the fifth inning. At the time, the score was tied. Fouled against the shin guard of Jack Hyatt. Art Shansky has now hit four home runs in the last five games. Ben Boswell waits on deck. Ron 
Swoboda is playing catch in the bullpen. We may see him in the outfield when the Mets go to the field. Now hands over the head. Around comes the arm. Shamsky lays off. The fastball is outside one and one. Shamsky once hit four home runs in three games played by the Cincinnati Reds, and the four home runs came in consecutive times at bat. I remember that, Ralph, and then shortly thereafter he was benched and couldn't understand it. Outside and high two and one. He's made himself into a good hitter. He was telling me on our postgame show on TV that he finally learned that there was more to hitting than hitting home runs, and he practices constantly hitting to the opposite field. As you hear so many successful hitters say, if you just concentrate on being a good hitter, the home runs will take care of themselves. The 2-1 delivery to Shamsky, a ground ball bounced to the right side of the diamond. A big hop for Glenn Becker, and he whips it there and he banks two men away. So two outs, nobody on. Ken Boswell coming up. Boswell has one for three. Boswell single back in the second and promptly stole second. Mets have stolen 36 bases in 48 attempts this year. They lead the major leagues in stolen bases. Gil Hodges has his ball club on the run. A running team is always an exciting team to watch. Swing and a miss, strike one. And the interesting thing about it with the added speed the Mets have this year to go with a strong pitching staff. They get into those low scoring ball games. It can make quite a difference. Two outs and nobody on. Mike Jorgensen is the on-deck batter. We're in the eighth inning. The Mets lead the Cubs 4-0. Down comes the pitch by hands. A half-swing foul ball. Now young Larry Gura, G-U-R-A, a left-hander, is warming up in the Cub bullpen. Leo may want to take a look at him. He's just out of college. Last year at Arizona State, he won 19 and lost only one. He started the year in the Coast League. And the Cubs wanted to bring him up for a look. His 19 and 1 was an NCAA record. Off the outside corner. As a matter of fact, it erased the old record set by Gary Gentry. Gentry was 17 and 1 at Arizona State. One ball, two strikes to Kenny Boswell. Bill Henn swings out of his windup. Now the pitch. Ground ball hammered down to first. Bothered by Ernie Banks. It goes by him. Boswell around first will hold there as Beckert hustles out to get the ball. So Kenny Boswell is on. We'll wait for the score. And Mike Jorgensen comes up. That ball... Bob was going toward Banks's left, and he was going over to the foul line to field the ball, and it hit something and cut back sharply about halfway to Banks out toward uh, the second base side, and he had to change directions, and that's how he lost it. It had a crazy hop on it. Officially, it will be scored an error on the first baseman, Ernie Banks. So Boswell, who stole second earlier in the ball game, is on first with two down in the eighth inning. There he goes. Here's the pitch. Ground ball hits the bags. He steps on the bag. The side is out. No runs, no hits, one error, one left on. And the score in the middle of the eighth inning at Wrigley Field. The New York Mets four and the Chicago Cubs nothing. And in the last of the eighth inning, Gary Gentry will be facing three gifted hitters. Ron Sano, Johnny Callison, and Ernie Banks. It would seem that if he can get by the last of the eighth inning, he would have quite a chance. In the ninth inning, the tail end of the batting order would be scheduled up. Ron Sano will be leading off. He has been the only Chicago Cub runner to get on. Sano struck out in the second. He drew a walk in the fifth inning. The only Cub runner in the game. Was promptly erased in a double play when Callison hit a ground ball to Bud Harrelson. Mets lead, 4-0, last of the eighth. Gentry has walked one, Sano, and struck out seven. Jerry looking in for his fans and Jerry Grody. A slender right-hander from Phoenix, Arizona. 
Now, now Sato asks for time, and he steps out. Next playing Sato as a pull hitter around toward left. Now the windup by Gentry. Here's the pitch. Way inside the other bail out. One ball, no strike. Bud Harrelson over toward the hole at short, and Ken Boswell is playing Sano far over toward the middle of the diamond. Now the pitch on the way. High, ball two. Swoboda is now playing right field, replacing Art Jensen. The 2-0 delivery by Gentry is in for a call. Thanks, two balls and one strike. Over the first seven innings, Gentry faced just 21 men. Now the wind-up by the lean right-hander. Down comes the pitcher. Long drive, hit deep to center. Way back, it's terrible. Agee's there. He's got it. One down. Agee back to the Ivy, about 395 feet away to collect it in. Right here, we pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. This is your New York Mets Baseball Station in Saratoga Springs, New York. WKAJ-FM 102.3 on your dial. Bob Murphy with Ralph Kainer and Lindsey Nelson were in the last of the eighth at Wrigley Field. The batter is Johnny Callison. Here's the pitch. Inside and high. Gentry might be pressing a little bit. He seems to be reaching back for that little something extra. His first pitch to Sano almost got away from him, and the first pitch to Callison almost got away. Callison, veteran left-hand hitter, 0 for 2. Outside, ball 2, 2 and nothing. Callison grounded out second to first and then hit him to a double play, started by Buddy Halston. Carlson raced to his left, came up with the grounder, stepped on second, and threw on to first to erase the Cubs' only runner. Fouled into the dirt by home Blake, two balls and one strike. Now two and one on veteran Johnny Callison. Callison has been doing a good job for the Cubs. Gentry winding the 2-1 delivery. Low at outside, ball three. One of the few times today that Jerry has worked that far behind the hitter. It's three balls and a strike. Second time all day, he's been behind three and one. Now Grody is setting up the targets. The outfield straight away. Here's the pitch. A half-swing fly ball to right field. It's fairly deep. Moving back is Swoboda. He's there. Makes the cut. So two men away in the last of the eighth inning. The wind is really blowing the right field. Callison actually was trying to hold up on his swing and still hit the ball fairly deep to right field. Two outs and nobody on. Ernie Banks the batter. Banks has topped the short, bounced out third to first. Nothing for two. And the Cubs are making a lot of noise now as they down in the third to Ernie Banks against Gary Gentry. Gentry into his wind up. And the pitch on the way, to high, ball one. Switch hitter, Jimmy Hall, the center fielder, is the on-deck batter. The 1-0 delivery to Banks. Curve outside, two balls with no strike. And again, Gentry, in this inning, finds himself working behind the batter. Banks, a full hitter, the Mets playing far around the left. That's over. A call strike gets two and one. Tommy Agee has swung far over into left center against Andy Banks. Dave Marshall playing left field is deep and over toward the line. The count is two and one as Gentry fires. It's popped up. May or may not be playable. Back comes Jerry Grody. He's back to the railing. No play. Lands about five rows back into the crowd. So the count is two and two on Ernie Banks. Ernie hit home run number 500 here at Wrigley Field yesterday afternoon. Tremendous outpouring of affection for Ernie Banks by the Cubs fans. 
Two outs and nobody on. Now Gentry winds. And the pitch to Ernie. And a line drive hit hard. Thanks again, Marshall. It breaks off of his glove. Thanks to the round first. He'll hold there. And now the score has really got a tough one on his hands. A hard hit line drive by Ernie Banks. Marshall came in. He got his glove on it, but he couldn't hold it. And he scored a keeper a base hit. And Gary Gentry has just lost his first for a no hit. Well, it would have been a fine play had Marshall caught the ball. Believe Ralph that he'd make that play about three times out of four. Tough scoring decision, and of course, the score has to take into consideration that it's a routine ball game and he can't be prejudiced toward the no hitter. On the play, Marshall hesitated before breaking in and then had to take the ball right off the top of the grass and couldn't hold it. Jimmy Hall, the batter, takes outside and high ball. The first hit of the game for the Chicago Cubs. Hard hit line drive to left that Marshall, after racing in, did get a glove on but didn't hold. And a fly ball hits a deep center. Back goes a G. Now he's under it waiting. And he has it inside his eye. Well, probably a very disappointed Gary Gentry walks off the mound, but what a game he's pitching. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on. And at the end of eight innings at Wrigley Field, it's the New York Mets four and the Chicago Cubs nothing. Well, here we go. Ninth inning, Mets lead the Cubs four nothing. An exciting pitching performance being turned in by Gary Gentry. A tough way to lose a no-hitter, but in fairness to Dave Marshall, he had a very tough play on his hand. Thanks to the hard thinking line drive, Marshall started the bit slow, then came on, lunged forward at the last moment, just above the blades of the grass and hit his glove. That would not stay. Wayne Garrett, who's had a double and a triple in two times at bat facing Bill Hands, but he takes outside and low ball one. Garrett did not start the ball game. Foy started, but Joe was hit on the back of the left hand his first time up by Bill Hands. The hand stiffened up on Foy. He had to leave the game, and Garrett took over. Fast ball for a tall strike. One ball and one strike. Magnificent pitching by Gary Gentry. It had been an impressive no-hitter until he lost it in the eighth inning with two down. Actually, only one real tough play in the field. That was made by Jorgensen. Swing on a miss. One ball and two strikes. Nobody out. We're in the ninth inning at Wrigley. And the Mets lead 4 nothing. Right-hander Bill Hands delivers to Garrett. It's fouled. Back upstairs. No play. Mets have four runs on six hits off Bill Hands. Inside and low. Hans was a 20-game winner last year, and he was the Cubs stopper. He was Hans, his time and again, brought losing streaks to an end. Particularly late in the season when things went bad for Chicago. Pitching two and two. And a change-up hit foul down toward Yogi on the coaching lines at first base. Shansky put New York in front in the fourth inning with a home run, his fourth in the last five games. Gary Gentry helped his own cause when he singled the second run in. Wayne Garrett tripled home the third, and Grody singled home the fourth. Now a foul back to the screen, no play. Smith came into Chicago for the two-game series of the Cubs, and Leo had his two 20-game runners ready, Bill Hans today and Ferguson Jenkins tomorrow. Mets with plenty of pitching talent going in their own right with Gary Gentry and Jerry Kuzman. Inside and low on a breaking ball. Now it's three and two. The bottom third of the order will be scheduled up for the Cubs in the last half of the ninth inning. Pitching three and two. That's over. Strike three calls. 
And it's the 11th strikeout of the game for Bill Hamm. Well, the Mets and Cubs meet again tomorrow here at Wrigley Field. And if you want to know the Mets' schedule for the balance of the year, plus all the schedules of the American and National Leagues, drop anchor at Shepard Island and pick up your 1970 Major League Baseball schedule. It's free, so get your copy from your Chevron dealer today. Slow grounder hit by Grody, right back to the mound, picked up by Hands, and thrown to Banks, two down. Two outs and nobody on, it brings up Gary Gentry. And he's going to get a standing ovation from many of the Cub fans here at Wrigley Field. Cub fans are very knowledgeable baseball fans like they are in New York. Even though Gentry is on the visiting ball club, they appreciate what he has done here today. He had a no-hitter with two outs in the eighth inning. Swing and a miss. Boy, I feel sorry for Dave Marshall. You know, that was a tough play, Ralph, and if he should not give up another base hit. It's going to be pretty hard for him to take for a while because, of course, a player likes to help his cause... And his team's cause like that. I also sort of feel sorry for the score. Jim Enright, veteran writer here in Chicago. He's been around a long time, and there will be a lot of debate whether or not he should have scored that an error or some other way than a base hit. Well, Jim Enright certainly is one of the most knowledgeable baseball writers in America. Now Gentry holds up on his swing, one ball and two strikes. Well, the important point is the point you made, Ralph. Even though a no-hitter is going... You have to score the play as though it was not a no-hitter. You have to be perfectly honest about it. And the players themselves wouldn't want it any other way. The one-two delivery. Swing and a miss, he struck him out. 12 strike out in the game for Bill Hens. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left on. Now, in the middle of the ninth inning at Wrigley Field, the New York Mets four and the Chicago Cubs nothing. Last of the ninth inning, 4 nothing New York. Jack Hyatt will be leading off. Then Willie Smith will be a pinch hitter. Followed by Don Kessinger. Until the base hit was two down in the eighth by Ernie Banks. Gary Gentry had faced the minimum number of batters. He had retired. Not in succession. But the 23 batters who came up. Spano had reached on a walk in the fifth inning and was a race in a double play. So the batter is Jack Hyatt in the last of the ninth inning. Here's the pitch by Gentry. It's over a strike one call. Bob, one of the classic no-hit, no-run stories happened right here in Wrigley Field. A fellow named Sad Sam Jones pitched it. Here's the pitch on the way. And a drive is deep to left center. Back goes A.G. He's getting there, and he makes the catch. One down in the last two of the ninth inning. Yeah, that's a great story, Ralph Phillips. Sam was pitching in the no-hitter, and he walked the first three batters in the ninth inning. And then he struck out the next three to get his no-hitter. An announcer here named Harry Creighton ran down in the field to interview Sam, Sam Jones about the no-hitter. And in the excitement of all, he came up to Sad Sam Jones, and he said, opening question, how's the family? He really got caught up in it, didn't he? What do you say in a fan like that? Now, Willie Smith, left-hand batter, is the pinch hitter for Bill Hamm. Last of the night, 4 nothing New York. Don Kessinger, the on-deck batter. And the pitch to Willie, low and inside, ball one. Seaver had that classic against the Cubs at Shea last summer. Breaking ball for a strike. Seaver calls it the imperfect game. He had a perfect game with one out of the ninth inning when Jimmy Qualls, who's now at Montreal, lined a clean single to left center field. The 1-1 delivery. Fastball over. Call strike two. Today, Gary Gentry has walked only one man at center. Struck out seven, allowed no runs, one hit. The two-out single in the eighth inning by Ernie Banks. The one-two delivery, way inside, no harm done with nobody on, and they hit him. They say the ball hit Willie Smith, and he goes to first base. 
Not noticeable from here. It must have just grazed his pass leg. One out and one on. Willie Smith is the third Cubs base runner in the game. Sano walked in the fifth, a bang single in the eighth, two down, and now Willie Smith is going to get a pinch runner. Cleo James coming in the game to run for Willie Smith. Cleo James will run for Willie Smith, and the batter is Don Kessinger, the shortstop and leadoff hitter. Bud Harrelson coming into the mound now to talk to Gary Gentry. Tomorrow, Jerry Kuzman will hook up against Ferguson Jenkins. We'll be on the air at 2.25 p.m. New York time. The last game of the two-game series. One out and one on as Gentry checks the runner. Now the pitch on the way. Fouled down the left field line. Running toward the line, Dave Marshall. It may go into the stands, and it does. Kessinger late getting around on Gentry, and the ball drops foul in the stands. Here at Wrigley Field, in the corners, both in left and right. The side wall of the stands comes up within about a yard of the foul line. One strike count on Kessinger. Down comes the pitch. Last ball outside, one ball, one strike. Kessinger, the league's all-star shortstop. Glenn Beckert is the on-deck hitter. High, outside, two balls and one strike, and Grody says, let's think about it for a minute. The count is two and one. Leo James, the pinch runner, is on first, one man out. And the pitch. Fastball, a strike, it's two and two. With the Cubs trailing by four, Kessinger doing his best to coach the walk. Now Gentry delivers two and two. Fouled out of play. Again, he slices one down the left field line over into the stand. Four runs on six hits, Chicago. No runs on one hit, last of the ninth inning. Kessinger is lined to second, struck out, and bounced out to second. Here's the pitch on the way, too high. And Gentry has a full count of three and two. Let's have the infield looking for a chance to make the double play to wind it up. And Tommy Agee is playing Kessinger to hit the ball to the opposite field. He shades him toward left center. The runner holds up the pitch. High fly ball to left center. Tommy Agee coming in. Out goes Harrelson. But Harrelson takes it to the out. Two men down. Two men away in the last of the ninth inning. Glenn Beckert the batter. Beckert has bounced to second. Fouled out to Jorgensen who made a good play. And lined out to right field. Earlier this year, Nolan Ryan pitched a one-hit shutout. A game that he struck out 15 of the Philadelphia Phillies. And it was the fourth one-hitter in Mets baseball history. Here's the pitcher on the way. Fastball a little bit high to Glenn Becker. Becker, a good hitter. And a contact hitter who rarely strikes out. Gentry checks the runner. In comes the pitch. Foul back to the screen. One ball, one strike. One and one now on Beckert. Billy Williams waiting on deck. And the pitch by Gentry. He pops it up into shallow right field. It could be trouble for Boda coming on. And 
across the line. He makes the catch. The ball game is over. A one-hit shutout for Gary Gentry. And now the entire Mets ball club comes spilling out of the dugout and racing to congratulate Gary Gentry. Swoboda caught that one on the dead run as he crossed the line into foul territory. So, a one-hit shutout by Gary Gentry. And the one hit, well, as we said, it was well hit. It was a sinking line drive by Ernie Banks with two outs in the eighth inning. Marshall, coming in on the ball, got his glove on it but couldn't hold it. A tough ball to catch and a tough play to score. And Gentry, oh, so close and yet so far. In the ninth inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, and one left on. The final score at Wrigley Field, the New York Mets four and the Chicago Cubs nothing. The second time this year, the Mets have had a one-hit shutout. So for the recap on a tremendous afternoon by Gary Gentry, here's Ralph. All right, Bob Murphy. Well, the job of the official score in a ball game is not an easy one. He's second guess quite often, and I'm sure that for a long, long time there'd be a lot of debate as to whether or not the one base hit that the Cubs got in this ball game should have been scored a base hit or an error. It was a line shot hit by Ernie Banks to left field on the pitch. The ball was hit sharply out, and Dave Marshall in left field got a late start and then decided to try for it, came in, and the ball hit his glove just above the grass right off the shoe tops and rolled away. It was scored a base hit, and that was the only thing that kept Gary Gentry from pitching a no-hit, no-run game. Mets got the first run of the ball game off Bill Hands in the fourth inning. Art Chamsky had a home run his fourth of the year and fourth in his last five ball games. Mets added another run in the fifth inning on a double by Wayne Garrett, who came in the ball game, replacing Joe Foy, who had to go out when he was hit by a pitch ball on the wrist. Garrett was driven in when Gary Gentry singled off the glove of the shortstop, Don Kessinger. Mets got two more runs in the seventh inning. A walk of Mike Jorgensen on a 3-2 pitch by Bill Hands. A triple by Wayne Garrett on a hit-and-run play, scoring Jorgensen from first base. And then a single by Jerry Grody down the left field line that drove in Wayne Garrett. That was the scoring in the ball game, and the Mets won it by a score of 4-0. Mets now have a record of 16 wins and 16 losses. The Cubs are now 16-13. and The Mets have picked up a full game on Chicago. They trail them by one.